It's the Dean's List on Bermuda College Radio. Live 4.0, powered by the great folks at One Communications. One gives you more. Yes, indeed, beautiful people. It is the Dean's List on Bermuda College Radio Live 4.0. Probably powered by those great folks over at One Communications. They call me LA, but I'm far from Hollywood. And I am joined in the studio by a very special guest, the young Florida King all the way. Coming through to Bermuda. Hey, Omega, what up? What's up? What's up? Yes, sir. How is everything on your end, King? It's bright and sunny over here. Nah, bright. I'm a little jealous. Just a little bit jealous. It's been raining, but, you know, the sun's shining through, so that's, that's a good thing. That's a good it's thing. Good. Thank you so much for coming on. I'm truly, truly grateful to have you. So no let the people know who you are, man. A Omega, King Omega. Let them know what's going on. I'm A Omega. You know, coming out of the Sunshine State. Happy to be here. Just released Hostile last month on the 29th through Empire and Orchard. Make sure you stream that Hostile by A Omega. Yes, sir. Now, give the people a general, uh, general understanding who A Omega is. Uh, now, I mean, you were born in, well, you grew up in parts of Florida, uh, and you co- currently reside in Florida. And from reading, like, your bio, you, you've been, in, like, you've had inspirations from the greats such as Jay-Z, Bob Marley, Carlos Santana. Now, that's a wide range of musical inspirations. So let, let's talk a little bit about that and how that plays out to who A. Omega is. Well, I was born in Alabama, and I was mm-hmm. born south. So, you know, growing up, I heard a lot of different types of music, and it was generally like blues and R and B, and people who played live instruments. You know, so in in the house, that's what I heard. In the car, that's what I heard my mom singing on the way to drive me to school, stuff like that. And then she put me in band, and that changed me forever. When I started picking up instruments and learning to read sheet music. I saw music differently. So I never, I still don't care about like what's happening in music right now. I care more about what sounds the best and how it makes me feel. So I've always just focused on that. Okay. So, I mean, you know, like I said, you, you, you've been, the inspirations that you've had was, you know, a wide variety, you know, it wasn't just, hip hop artists or rap or I'm sorry, R and B artists, it was like a wide wide range and very versatile range. And that's something that you don't see nowadays, you know, especially when it comes to rappers or, you know, uh artists per se. Um I'm sorry, no, not so much when it comes to rappers with artists, absolutely. So we can't even put you in a in a box of just being a, a rap artist because you actually consider yourself a rap slash pop artist. So would you say that your musical influences and the the influence from your mom going in band, would you say that that uh, portrays to who you are today as, as an artist? Absolutely. And I only did the rap, hip hop, pop artist thing because like they needed terms. I don't want to give those terms. I like music artists, musician, you know, or just artists like Prince said. Absolutely. Art. Yes. Just like that. Because art, <laughs> yes, indeed. why you know, art can be vague, art can be uh, broad. It's all of that, you know. So I like mm-hmm. all of that. I use all of that. Absolutely, and I'm glad because you know you you have some people that don't want to put a label on themselves, you know. Um, and it's like I said, it's very very seldom you see artists that do that. You you know you would have some that say, look, I'm a rap artist, I'm an R&B artist. No, I'm a I'm an artist, and I, it's it's really like a breath of fresh air when you know I hear people say that because, like I said, it's it's something that is so almost like I don't want to say that it's dying nowadays, but it's something that is kind of unheard of. Right, so, right. what would you say other than you know being such a wide or versatile artist? What would you say that sets yourself apart from? or A Omega apart from everybody else doing their thing right now? Man, big thing is 
I don't have any major influences from the past decade of anything that came out. So I'm like behind and it's because I refuse to be up to date with a lot of people right now. I just don't want to hear it at all. Like my the main person I used to listen to growing up was LL Cool J and Rakim Big Daddy Kane, right? That's mm. who I, that's who introduced that's me to hip hop. And then the next person was Eminem. And the bars crazy with Eminem, you know? And then uh one of our neighbors gave me my first gifted CD. It was the blueprint from Jay-Z. And from that moment forward, I saw music differently as a hip hop artist. I was like, hip hop is a business. It's a brand. It's a living being. You know what I'm saying? So I started to study hip hop. And that's why I don't listen to none of the new people for real. Like I don't have nothing against them. They doing their thing. They making whatever they want happen. But they couldn't tell you where hip hop is from, who started it, why it started, what it's for. They, they can't. And they don't care. Mm-hmm. So that's what makes me different. I know that personally. Mm-hmm. So, uh, well, that's one thing for sure. Well, one thing's for certain, two things for sure. Um, <laughs> a lot of, you know, a lot of the newcomers, they don't understand the origins of hip hop, even though this is 2023 is the 50 year anniversary of hip hop. And what would your thoughts be on the, I don't know, did you ever, did you see the, I believe it was the P, BET Awards? I saw most of it and they honored uh, Busta Rhymes. Busta Rhymes, okay. Yeah. Uh, so what, what would you think about his speech in regards to when it comes to hip hop and the culture nowadays? Because his speech was actually very, very inspirational. Uh, and I mean, Busta is an OG of the game. So what would you what would you say about the um, the speech that he gave in, in reference to the culture and where it's at right now? I mean, he hit it right on the head. He was like, in order for us older cats, like not speaking for him, in order for the older mm-hmm. cats to inspire the younger cats, they have to keep up their image and their consistency with how things were and how things are now. You know, and as much as we might not like it, that's real. You know, if we're not out here doing what we always said we was doing, then they're not gonna believe it. You know, we can't tell them. That's like people would tell you, you know, do as I say and not as I do or whatever. It's kind of like that. Yeah. People got to pay attention. And like he said, he was like, they're shining. So (laughs) he know how to make you pay attention, but he's always know how to make people pay attention. Absolutely. I mean, like I said, Buster is an OG. He, you know, that that speech actually still it still resonates with me. I mean, you know, BT Awards the most vibrant music videos of all. Yeah, man. Between him, I would definitely say between Buster and and Missy, those two. Exactly. You you cannot. You can't. When it comes to videos, you can't top those two. I'm sorry. They. The Michael way Jackson their artistry, not Michael Jackson, absolutely, absolutely. But I, I mean, as far as like a hip hop artist, right, or right. as far as rap, the, the rap culture, those two, you, I, I don't, I haven't seen anybody reach that level yet. I've seen people come close. You know, there have been some people that have tried to tap into the creativity, but there will never be another Buster or another Missy when it comes to creativity and setting the bar. For uh for for music videos, I'm sorry, it, it's just yeah, it like it was like an anime came into a live action film watching that. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, let's talk about your new single, Hostile. So, where did the inspiration come from for for your new track, Hostile? From everything that I was doing at the time, a lot of people ah. don't. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just tell it here. I wrote that song like three years ago and it was based on basically what we would talk about right now. You know, people were uh, telling me I can't talk about things from the past. I'm talking about blues, clues, all kinds of stuff from the past. So I'm proving the point. I'm talking my trash and I'm, I'm talking about the movement and how I wanted to move the hostile energy, you know, just can't stop. Got to keep moving. Don't care who, who, how you feel about it at all, you know, Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, the hostile, I mean, you, you said it's all on streaming platforms. So is it a part of an upcoming project? Or I mean, you, you said you wrote it three years ago. 
So do is there anything else that you got in the tank that's kind of you're working on that might, you know, come out a little later or is it just a part of just something to drop out? I think we lost them. Oh, yeah, man, I got. Oh, okay, there you go. I got plenty of things in the tank. You know, uh, one of my favorite people I used to study was Tupac. And he used to mm-hmm. say, you know, write millions of songs, write them all and think about the future. Think about where you want to be when you write these songs. Think about where you're going to be when you write these songs. And that's what I did when I wrote this song, knowing that I was putting in that effort to get to the next level, the level that I've just recently reached now and trying to get to past this level, you know, so I got a lot of things, but um, I'm not ready to put out an album yet. No, not until I, not until I knock some milestones down, then I'll be ready to put out an album. I'm not going to put out an album until I got everybody's attention. I like it. I, I like it. I like that. So, uh, I mean, without giving too much, because you mentioned that you don't want to put out, you know, an album or, you know, a, a EP or anything like that until you knock down some milestones. Um, without giving away too much, what would you say would be one of those milestones? Like what, because I mean, you're trying to build a buzz and you're trying to, you know, turn some heads and, and get some ears to listen. So what would be one of the milestones that A Omega is trying to reach and try to accomplish, right, in the next three years? Man, I want to get on one of three, if not all, radio shows, just like we are on right now. Mm. I want to get on Sway in the Morning. I want to go talk to, you know, Funk Flex. You know, I want to go to Europe and get on Tim Westwood and showcase mm-hmm. skill, you know, showcase real talent and remind people that popular opinion ain't so popular, that sometimes the, the best dude in the room is the best dude in the room. And it don't matter if well, that's facts. he's popular or not. Like, he could become popular overnight. You know, a lot of these people, mm-hmm. they do that, you know, so whether they was talented or not, but I want to do it with skill, no gimmicks. I don't like gimmicks, no gimmicks. You know, Facts. believe in real hustle, real muscle. Like a song, like Hostile Say, get it out the mud, you know, like real work. Absolutely. It's undeniable then and you can't take it from me. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's actually, that. I mean, that's, I'm, I'm loving the goals. I'm loving the milestones that you, you, you hustling for. I can, I, I can respect that, you know. Radio like, maps. <laughs> I'm telling you, I will say this though. Um, I, you know, I was watching a uh, reel that from another artist who, you know, I've had on the show before. And believe it or not, he was saying that, you know, sometimes radio, you know, a lot of artists focus on radio, which is cool. But you also have to also like think about like distribution deals and, you know, marketing and self-promotion. And at the end of the day, it just comes down to a budget, you know, like what you're willing to invest in. So, you know, I'm, I love the fact that you're so hungry to go after radio, especially like Sway in the morning, Funk Flex, um, you know, T- Tim Westwood, or, you know, if you, other places in Europe, such as like BBC One Extra, like all those great places for, for artists like yourself. Um, but definitely, I would, I would definitely encourage you to also, you know, look at the social media platforms and, and invest in, you know, branded content or um sponsored content if you will because that is also another way to you know build your build your platform up you know and, cr- and create a buzz of course Absolutely. you sound like my so, man now. i just got a new man because <laughs> all the effort i've been putting in and they, they i love it place, I love and they like yo we gonna get your social going you know so yeah because yeah, i was i'll be real i was in prison when instagram came out so i came home and niggas was mm-hmm. like yo you got what's your Instagram? I'm like, what is that? Right. You know, so some things happened when I wasn't around, and I had to catch up. Mm. Right. Okay. Now, I mean, you mentioned that you, you you did some time. Would you say that that has uh, benefited you and, and caused you to somewhat grow as an artist from from your time? Because I mean, we we've heard that you know a lot of you know even with big. Like big, he he didn't go to the pen, but you know someone set the fall for him and whatnot. But you know you get the artists that 
go to prison and they come out and they're just they blow up i mean you got like jennings uh you know uh well ti was out before he went but you know different artists that have been inside the pen how would you say that influenced you um to where you are today i started to read a lot and focus on my own thoughts and then they all went down on paper so the more i wrote down the more I realized I needed to be in the studio because I think faster than I write. And then of course, Jay-Z being my favorite, my role model, I understood the fact that I could write songs without writing them down. So then I just started to write songs in my mind. Once I finished the song, I wrote it all down for one purpose only, to copyright it. So the copyright office has all, all my written downs and I don't have them. They got the only copies basically. But how it really influenced me was all I had was the radio. You know, this little radio with two batteries in it and some head and some earbuds. And I could only listen to what was going on at the time on the radio. So if it wasn't on the radio at the time, I couldn't hear it. You know what I'm saying? And um, that whole time I was just like, man, I, I need to get on the radio. I need to get on the radio because everybody in there was listening to the radio. That just got me going, you know? getting out here, getting a job, going to work, listening to the radio on the way to work, after work. You know, a lot of people listen to um, streaming platforms. Streaming platforms definitely matter. They definitely Absolutely. matter. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and um, we definitely putting a budget together for that to reach mm -hmm. these milestones with these streaming platforms. And I'm, I'm really interested in title to that payout. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. That's one thing, Jay, Jay definitely did his thing and made sure that artists get what they deserve with, especially independent artists, well, artists in general, get yeah. what they deserve when it comes to those, those numbers. So Pandora, I can't wait to see it. <laughs> I, I love Pandora. It was one of the first streaming platforms I found when I was coming out of prison. I was actually in work release. I had a job at some place, had to mm -hmm. go back to the compound after work. And um, this dude had a cell phone. He was letting me listen to it while I worked. And you showed me Pandora, and I was like, "Man, this is this is crazy cool." You know, you can pick every artist of all time on this thing. So that was yep. my first experience with a streaming platform was Pandora. So the first thing I wanted to do when I released my first song was get a Pandora station, which doesn't it's not included when you DistroKid, TuneCore, or whoever you drop your music through. That's not included. You got to do that work yourself to get added mm -hmm. on there. You know. Yep. So I got that work done and I got added on there. So make sure y'all go listen to my Pandora station also. Absolutely. So let the let the people know where they can reach you at it. Your Twitter, well, not threads, I don't know, whatever the cool kids are doing nowadays. Uh, you know, of course your Instagram and all that great uh great stuff. I would say go to official dot com. That has everything. Shows, uh radio interviews and every streaming. Um, every social, Twitch, Twitter, TikTok, everything. Usually it's the real A Omega. The only one that's different is uh, Instagram. It's A.O underscore Omega. Because AO is my actual initials. You know, I grandfathered my nickname in from my grandfather, Hall of Fame mm -hmm. baseball player. So I'm the AO Mega because I'm trying to get bigger than him. <laughs> yes, sir. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love it. As that's, I mean, you know, we're both Jay Z fans, and Jay Z has said it best: "Don't be good, be great." So, right. absolutely, absolutely. Got to get out of Granddad's shadow, you know. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and I mean that's something because you know having you know uh, your grandfather be you know a former uh, baseball player, well, baseball Hall of Famer. You know, people kind of put you in this box, and they put you in this like, "Oh, you're gonna be like your dad, or you're gonna be like your granddad," but you out here creating your own lane. So yeah. we, we love to see it. We love to see it. So thank you so much again, Young King. Uh, I can't wait to see what becomes of the future A Omega. Uh, make sure you all cop hostile on all streaming platforms. And again, uh, drop that website for them. Let them know where they can reach you at www.officialaomega.com Be there. Yes. Yes, sir. It is the Dean's List. Thank y'all so much for watching.